Plaintiff Joshan Ricketts has been friends with the defendant for over 15 years, and she was his support system when he was struggling with a drug and alcohol addiction. Joshan says he's been clean for 180 days, and he's suing his former friend for breach of contract and rent. Defendant Jessica Martin says she never knew Jashan was a drug addict, but she claims his alcohol addiction was so severe that she had to separate herself from him for months at a time. Jessica denies owing Jashan for anything. All rise. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Greg Mathis presiding. You may now be seated. Start with you. Uh, Your Honor, Jessica's been my friend for 15 plus years. Um, one of my biggest confidants. Um, she's been through with me through a lot of ups and downs. Your Honor, I struggled with not only alcohol addiction, but also drug addiction as well. Um, I struggled with cocaine and also ecstasy. Um, she's been there. Um, in 2017, I decided to turn my life around, Your Honor. Um, not only have I been take doing NA and also um, AA as well, but I'm also in a, um, I'm also in an outpatient treatment program, completed almost 100, 180 days. Um, clean? Clean. Really good. That's six months. She got her mouth all twisted up like she going to give me a different story <laughs> about that being clean. Let me hear from you. Like he said, I've known him for 15 plus years. We even went and got matching tattoos this year. Um, you all date? No, we're best friends. <laughs> what do you mean? You say, I don't get tattoos with yeah. my best friend. Yes, Brooks. you do. I'm a friend of yours. You say, yes, I do. <laughs> yes, they do all the time. I thought you said, I do. People do it all the time. Oh, people. All right. Uh-uh. OK. OK. Anyways, um, he's lived with me a few times throughout the years. Um, back in, like, 2006, he was living with me, and I was there for him when he was dealing with um, his sexuality and becoming who he is. Um, I was also there for him in about two that, no, let me take that back. 2009, we started partying and drinking a lot. Um, he took it a little over excessive and when he parties, he gets angry sometimes, he gets violent. Sometimes he's just wild must and not crazy. be ecstasy. Ecstasy is a feel good drug. I don't even really know about his ecstasy problem. I okay. only know about his drinking problem. So he's admitting more to Mean you drunk? He, big time. Um, so... We started partying. I mean, there was times that I had to just completely back out of being around him for months on end because the drinking was just too much. How about the cane? You a cane head? He said he's a cane head. I've never done it in my life. Okay. Um, then there was 2011. He was in an abusive relationship. All of that involved alcohol. The guy he was with was a lot older than him, probably like 15, 20 years older than him. And there was a lot of abuse going on during all that. He would call me crying about getting his <laughs> whoops, excuse my language, and all of that. And I mean, I did what I could for him, but what do you do? So, and then, um, I mean, the drinking never stopped. He got into some legal trouble with it. Um, back in October of 2017, he again got into a situation with his current partner, if they're still together. Um, he got drunk, busted out the windows of the car, ended up going to jail. Um, they get evicted from the apartment, and then that's when I come and let them live with me. Okay. Hope you all gonna maintain your friendship oh. because you're attached forever. No. Got the same tattoo. Th this is over. Well, you know it's not. Oh, it is. Every time you look at that tattoo, you're gonna have to think about it. I'm him. always gonna he be has a J. The same thing, though it's not over. I'm always Ever. gonna be a J. Go ahead. Regardless to the fact, you're <laughs> regardless to what fact. Uh, <laughs> regardless to the fact of whether or not we'll we'll still we'll still maintain a friendship or whether we do or not. It, right. Doesn't it's... matter to you. Okay. Let's talk about your breach of contract and your rent that okay. you're suing for. Well, back in October. Um, I did I did go to jail for domestic abuse um, with my current partner. And when I went to jail, we had got evicted from the apartment. Um, Jessica, we as in whom? Me and my partner. Mm -hmm. And Jessica had allowed us to come and stay with her okay. throughout the time. Um, at first, there was no contract of rent. Rent didn't come until later on down the line. Um, however, I at, however I was then released from um, jail in November, November 19th, I believe is the exact 17th. Um, so I'm sorry, mm -hmm. November 17th, I was released. Um, throughout that time, there were bonds paid on that were of my money totaling $1,250. 
Um, and the the agreement was was that when that money was returned, I would get that money back. And I have not received that money back. As a return from the court? Um, the, there was there was originally two hundred and fifty dollars that was returned from the mm -hmm. court, and then there's a thousand dollars that's set to be returned on the twenty sixth of this month. All right, and that is it's anticipatory breach of a okay. uh, contract, meaning her actions and anything else may uh, indicate that she doesn't intend to pay you your money. Now, what actions has she gotten into with you prior to you asking for the money up front? Well, as far as when the $250 was returned to her, I asked her um, before the check even came. Uh -huh. Um, I asked her, you know, what were we going to do about the bonds? She told me that I would get the money when it came. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this was when we originally fell out. And what happened? Um, <laughs> to cause you to believe you weren't going to get the thousand later. Because we were, we were at a point to where the friendship was dissolved. Over there what? There wasn't, well, it, uh, <laughs> Your Honor, back, back in February, I had another court case. And um, I had another court case. I couldn't drive to the court case. Mm -hmm. I asked Jessica if she wouldn't mind taking me to the court date. She said, I have no problem. I'll pick you up from work. I'll take you. The day of, Your Honor, she sends me a text message and she says, well, I can't come and take you because I want to go and do what I want to mm -hmm. do with someone who was just released. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what led to the falling out. That's what led to everything else. Go ahead. So when she told me that she couldn't take me to court for for whatever reason, she wanted to go and have Y'all fell with. out. Got we, that. We fell out. And so when we fell out, um, she then told me that I had 30 days to leave at that point. And so I, after that, after that, on the 6th of March, I reached out. She reached out to me because my partner had then went to the house. Uh -huh. Um, and my partner had went and took a few things. So you think out. because you fell out that you certainly weren't going to get your money back, so you better get her while the getting is good. <laughs> Not essentially, sir. Not essentially. Because when I reached out to her and I asked her, Jessica, what is it that we can do? What are we going to do about uh -huh. the bonds? She told me that when the money came, she, that she would take it to my dad. No problem. Well, okay? it hasn't come yet. Uh, no. This is in regards to the $250, Your Honor. I don't want to talk I about that. I don't have that, that Your Honor. I have not received that. You believe it was she's going to breach the 1000 which hasn't come yet. No, so Your Honor. you mixed me up with all this jail? <laughs> I was in jail <laughs> and that bond. Then I was in jail for that bond. Now, you're already entitled to the 250 because she got that in her hand and didn't give it to you. You're not entitled to the 1000 yet because she hasn't gotten it in her hand unless she has expressed that she does not intend to pay you when she gets the one thousand, there has or been, done. There, there hasn't been any. All right, well, she doesn't know any. you that yet. She hasn't breached that yet because it I hasn't understand. come into her hands yet. I, I understand that, Your Honor. All right, and what is the rent? Tell me about rent. Well, Your Honor, um, as far as the rent goes, um, we pay we pay rent on the first, utilities on the fifteenth. Um, there was rent paid to her for the month of March. What was your share of the rent you were to pay? Uh, Three forty-five. Three forty-five was your share every month. That's correct. All right. So that's your share. And what are you saying about her? Um, well, Your Honor, on the on the sixth, she contacted me via via Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, and what happened was is that we my partner went to the house that morning. He got some electronic things from the house. We were, I was already given the, the notice that I had until April first. Not a problem. So we left one house key. Because at that point we were already we we're already. How does she owe you for rent? Sir? Well, how she owes me for rent, Your Honor, yes, is because sir. she asked me not to return back to the home okay. unless someone and you was had paid there. for that month. That and she I was, was paying for that to? month, Your Honor. All that's right. correct. All right, ma'am, what do you say to this? Rent. Um, it was actually three fourteen. My total rent is ten ninety five. There were seven people living in there. If you divide it by seven people, it's one fifty seven each. So it's three fourteen. That is what he paid me. On the sixth, when he returned his key. I feel like any landlord, if I return your, my key to you, you don't live there anymore. So that is when I told him, don't enter the premises anymore. And he came and got the rest of their stuff on March 23rd. Mm -hmm. You left your items there in March. Um, well, Your Honor, when I tried to go back mm -hmm. to go and get them, mm -hmm. after she asked me not mm -hmm. to come back to the home on the 6th, mm -hmm. I then on the 8th began reaching out to her and trying to make arrangements to come and get mm -hmm. my things because of the... And what happened? 
Well, she, there wasn't, first, the first weekend, mm -hmm. um, it was her daughter's birthday. She so, told you she So she told me I could not come. Uh -huh. She told me Next I could not time. come that weekend. We tried to make arrangements, uh -huh. nothing, never got any, never got any response what? from her. You because called her or text her? I texted her try? and I called. And she never responded to those And she never responded back. So then finally, call. on the week of the 23rd, uh -huh. I sent her a message and I told her, look, I, I have made these plans to come on this day at this mm -hmm. time to come and get my things. And I had, a, I had the other key to the, to the mm -hmm. home. So so it, I advised her that if she would not let me in, that I would allow myself in mm -hmm. in order to retrieve my belongings. Mm -hmm. Because at this point... All right. Do you have any of those communications where you uh, tried to get your things and she uh, would not make them available to you or would not make the time available to you for the pick them up? What did you want to tell me, ma'am? Um, we did have an agreement that the weekend of the 9th on the mm -hmm. 11th, mm -hmm. that Sunday, he was supposed to come get his stuff after he left church. He contacted me that Sunday night and told me he could not come his, get his stuff because he had financial and legal issues mm -hmm. going on. He never attempted again? Huh? Yes. He never the attempted following, again? The following week, yes. And what happened? And I didn't respond to that one because wow. I was busy. I do have children. I work. And I you have never a lot responded going on, since. And I'm not going to Did you ever respond yes. after that? Yes. When, when did you respond me the week after of the 23rd, that? Pardon me? Caught, when he contacted me the week of the uh -huh. 23rd, the day before he came to get his stuff, I told him, I'll see you at 8 a.m. Okay. So from the 18th, to the 23rd, you didn't respond? No. Why? I had nothing to say. I didn't no, know if I was No, you do have something to Saturday say. You either say, I owe you, or I don't, or you owe me, or you don't. You we do have something to say. When you get sued, you better have something to say, or it's called a default judgment. We talking judgment about money. for the plaintiff. Have a good day. I wish her the best in life, and that's all I have to say. I ain't got to say to him. He can.